Well, hey friends, good morning and welcome to uh, Centerpoint Christian Church at Home Edition. Uh, once again, thanks so much for joining us today. If, if you're new with us, uh, we're, we're so glad that you stopped by. Uh, we'd love to get a chance to know you. And so you can text the word welcome to the number on the screen. And uh, just for doing that, we'll send you a Starbucks gift card so you can grab a coffee on us. Also, if you're looking to make an end of the year financial contribution, you can do that in, in, in one of three ways. You can give through our app, you can go online on our website and give there, or you can send a check by mail to the church. Just make sure it's postmarked by <clears throat> December 31st. So the CARES Act that was passed early this year provides some added tax benefits for charitable contributions, and you can read more about that on our website uh, by clicking, clicking on the Give tab uh, at the top. Well, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Um, we haven't had one yet. Uh, that is, we haven't had Christmas uh, yet. Uh, our plans got majorly disrupted this past week when I tested positive for COVID. Uh, started feeling bad last Sunday night, December 20th, and I just had this hunch, you know. So I went and got a test on Monday, uh, then on Tuesday got the results. And so that pretty much rail railroaded all of our Christmas plans. So I've been quarantined uh, in the basement, uh, trying to make sure that the rest of my family doesn't uh, get it. So here I am. So welcome to my basement. Uh, but hey, 2020, right? My 2020 started by having to rehome my dog after a biting incident, and I'm ending it quarantined here in the basement. So it seems par for the course this year. Uh, but we all have a 2020 story. All of us do. We were all impacted in some way this year. And here's a question I want you to ponder. Uh, hindsight is 2020. You've heard that phrase. So in hindsight, in hindsight, if you knew on January 1st, 2020, it's almost a year ago. If you knew on January 1st, 2020, what was about to unfold, what was about to happen, what was coming our way, what would you have done differently to prepare for it? Uh, knowing what you know now, looking at 2020 in hindsight, what would you, what would you do? Would you work more hours? Uh, would you spend more time with family? Would you watch more TV? Uh, would you engage a little more in God's Word? Would you... Would you make weekly worship more a priority, whether online or in person? Uh, would you make sure that you are more connected in community? Uh, this is a really important question that I don't want you to blow by uh, because in just a few days, it will be January 1st, 2021. And COVID isn't going away simply because we've flipped the calendar. Uh, the economy doesn't reset just because the year does. 2021 will be hard in its own right. Maybe not 2020 hard, but every year has some hard days. You know that. And this year, this coming year, 2021, you will encounter some type of difficulty that you didn't expect, but you can plan for it even though you don't know what it is yet. Uh, that's the beauty of hindsight. This year has taught us some things. So what did you learn this year that will help carry you through next year? So I want you to just pause right now and just take some time to reflect on that question. Maybe grab a pen and a piece of paper and, and write down your thoughts uh, or discuss it together uh, as a family. But we'll pause uh, right now so you can discuss that question. If you knew on January 1st, 2020, what this year would be like, what would you have done differently to prepare yourself?
Well, today we're going to hear from some folks from our Centerpoint family who have a 2020 story. They've, they've had a difficult 2020, and each of them in a different way. But what they've all done in response is they've taken some time to reflect on their circumstances and the God who can redeem them. And so I think you'll be blessed by their stories today. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Brent Carter. My wife, Betsy, and I have been coming to Center Point for 20 years now. I've uh, been through a lot through that time, really grown a lot spiritually. So we've really enjoyed our time there. We became life group leaders, volunteered in a number of other ways. So we've, we've really enjoyed our time with Center Point. We've got three kids who are now adults, launched and off the payroll. And uh, we'll get to see them for Christmas. So we're excited about that. So 2020, what a difference a year makes. Uh, last December, I was looking forward to taking a new job. It was going to start in January. I was excited about it. I was sure that God had led me there. Uh, I enjoyed what I did in my, my prior job, but this job was it. I mean, it utilized my background and experience. I got to work for a former colleague and uh, the, the job that I was going to do just was a mix of all the things that uh, God made me good at, and I was excited about it. So that was going to start in January, but Betsy and I talked in December of last year. Um, it was a rough year for her because she was traveling almost 100% of the time. And in December, well, actually November, her mom had broken her hip. We had to put her into a nursing facility. So with all the travel, Betsy and I talked. Betsy just said, with everything going on with my mom, too much pressure at work, would you mind if I just quit my job, you start your job, um, just see how we are financially with that, and that's what I'd like to do in order to just make sure my mom is settled into the nursing home. So we prayed about it, talked about it, I looked at our finances, and I, th I said, yeah, let's do that. So that's what she did, um, quit her job, got her mom settled, and, you know, th we were doing okay. Forward into, you know, probably February, she started looking again, and she came to me, and after many applications and o online searches, she came to me and she said, you know what, I just don't think I had the energy to go back into a corporate role. Uh, would you mind if I took <laughs> more of a mindless job where I don't have to take work home, it's not impacting me, it's not stressful, but it's going to pay less. So again, we talked and prayed about it and I said, sure, that's fine. Just do what you need to do, take care of your mom, and then gradually you can take on a role somewhere. So it was in March. She was doing some grocery shopping at Kroger, walked in and saw a sign, said, apply today, work tomorrow. So um, there was something that God was telling her in that, and she just applied and then began working right away. So she became an employee in the click list area. So if, if you've ever ordered online with Kroger, gone to pick up your groceries, maybe you see this blonde haired lady, masked lady, bringing your, your groceries out to you. So she's, she's been doing that. Um, what we didn't realize at the time is what God had planned uh, for her in that role. So things were, were going okay. Um, for me at work though, um, COVID hit. So just as many people were affected by that, um, our industry, the, the company that I was working for was in the events, exhibitions, and trade shows industries. So you can imagine how that took a, a nosedive quickly. So in April, we started furloughing people. I was uh, reduced to two days a week with commensurate pay. And um, finally, I was furloughed. And then that was in May. And then by the end of June, I was fully laid off. So no income, no benefits, nothing there. So that was tough. Um, for those of you who have worked for years and years and used to having a job where you're adding value, you're bringing in income, you know, that was tough for us. So within five months time there, from January to, to June, um, our income was reduced by over 70%. 
So I did a lot of praying to the, through that. Um, you know, we trusted God. <laughs> You've got this, God, and we know you do. But just looking at finances, we knew we had to make some reductions. So, I mean, the, the typical things that, that people would look at, you know, with memberships and all that. And I thought, well, no more Manny Petties for me. And, uh, you know, canceled my Cosmo subscription, things like that. But, you know, we were frugal anyway, but, uh, you know, no more eating out and just being real careful about that. And unfortunately, our giving was also impacted. So it was a tough decision for us, but we had to reduce our unfinished commitment um, by a good bit. And that, that was difficult. You know, we didn't want to do that, but we just felt that it was something we needed to do to, to get through it. So on the one hand, we knew God would take care of us. On the other hand, we know that God needs us to take action too, so that's what we did. So things were going along, and what we didn't realize in Betsy's role is how much of a, a mission place that is for her. Um, she got to, to meet several of her co-workers. She kind of took a, a few younger ones under her wing. So it was just confirmation that even though that job doesn't pay a lot for Betsy, um, we knew that that was her mission field. That was... Uh, how she was going to shine God's love and make an impact on other people. For me, I kept looking. And for those of you who have looked and looked and looked and contacted and networked and you know, done all those things that they say to do in your job search and nothing was coming through. I mean, it was like a, sending applications you know, through a black hole. Nothing was happening there. The good news was I had other time on my hands, so I got some things done around the house, projects that had been waited for years, uh, have been sitting there for years. I got a lot of yard work done, helped neighbors with yard work, uh, just tried to volunteer where I could, did some work here at church. So I just took advantage of that time. You know, here's a situation where things look pretty dark, but, um, I heard a preacher say recently that, you know, your happiness comes from external things, but your joy is internal. Wait, that was Sean. So, so I, I knew that then, um, and so it was a good confirmation recently when he said that. But it was just, you know, I had to find joy in my situation, in our situation. So that's what I did um, through that tough time. Uh, more recently, um, even though we had lost our benefits and, and had to, to do one of those external things that, you know, one, you pay a lot, two, doesn't have great coverage, uh, God's blessings started to come back or come through again. And uh, one of those blessings was that after Betsy has been there at Kroger only six months, because she had gotten a promotion, she then qualified for health benefits. So that saved us some good money there. Uh, also, I've been able to take on some consulting, some contract work with a former employee. So that's certainly a positive as well. I've been doing some work with the leadership here at church. And, and all of that uh, hasn't br brought in a lot of income, but all of that is... I mean, it's reassuring that God has this. Um, he's, he's always there saying, <clears throat> we got your back. You know, I'll get you through this. So um, I'm not sure what that looks like yet. It could be anything from, you know, another corporate position. It could be continuing in my, um, in my coaching consulting that I just do on the side. Um, Betsy and I have been on a, a positive health journey for a while. <clears throat> and I became a, a health coach, so you know maybe that's a direction that he wants me to go. Uh, I don't know what the, you know it could be a nonprofit. So I just want to be open to anything, and I just trust that that God will lead us there.
control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun chasing the shadows, in my weakness your glory Hi, I'm Amber Caesar. Uh, I have been a member attender at Centerpoint for about five years now. We started around the ABCs of Financial Freedom. Um, 
I am a new to staff, been here just about a year, January 1st. Uh, I am the operations coordinator, so you'll see me around the building, probably on Sundays, disinfecting things, uh, but through the week, you know, cleaning rooms and helping out with events and all of that. So 2020 started off great for me and my family. Uh, my mother accepted Christ uh, as her Lord and Savior during our uh, Christmas movies series in December. So that was super exciting, uh, something that I have prayed about for many years, uh, me and my husband as well. And uh, January comes and she's ready to get baptized. Could not be more ecstatic. And on the day of her baptism, uh, I was supposed to take part with her in this. And I woke up and I went to take a step and I couldn't move anymore. Uh, at that point, I had ruptured a disc. It had uh, blown out and completely cut off supply to my L4-5 nerve in that area. Um, super sad. <laughs> the day that I wanted to be at church, like more than anything, I couldn't. I was in the ER. Uh, so that was a very hard moment. But fast forward a little bit, we start hearing about this coronavirus thing. I'm dealing with these back issues. We scheduled some epidurals. Um, so my second epidural was administered and on that day, uh, they decided to shut down uh, elective surgeries. So during this period of time, we have been doing um, pain management and uh, exploring a surgical route. So virus shuts down schools. I'm a mother of three kids. I have a seventh grader, a fifth grader, and a second grader. I'm full-time employee here at Center Point. How does this work? I don't know. We just get through each day, right? So um, when they decide to open up elective surgeries, I had been meeting that whole time with Mayfield Clinic, and we decided let's go with it. So I think it was about a week after elective surgeries were in, I was able to have surgery on my L4 or 5. Uh, they were able to clean out the disc rupture uh, around my nerve so I could finally get feeling back in my foot. This whole time uh, in May, or from January to May, I had had no feeling in my feet. So that was really hard, but I was able to continue life and keep moving. So surgery was tough. They wouldn't let my husband back in there. It was really, uh, really hard moments for me. Uh, but we came home and my kids were at home from virtual school, so they were able to help me and my husband as well to get back on my feet. Um, slowly through physical therapy and different things, uh, I was able to regain all of that back. I can tie my shoes on my own now, which is super exciting and things that you take for granted. Um, coronavirus is still here, you know, and kicking, and uh, my mother-in-law, uh, has been battling breast cancer for the last four years almost. Um, they came back and said, you know, the cancer's back in her brain and there's nothing else that we can really do. So that was tough. And in the meantime, I had an aunt that was diagnosed with lung cancer. They gave her four to six months to live. So, um, you know, death is, you know, kind of looming around and it's hard times. Um, and then uh, my aunt passed away which was super sad. She was a wonderful lady, uh, great memories with her. And then Jackie started to decline, my mother-in-law. Uh, they gave her two to three months. She passed away just one day shy of one month. But through that, uh, John, my husband, has a large family. There's six kids. We were all able to come together and support each other through that time uh, and rest in the hope that we'll see her one day. Um, so we've had a rough year. But there's been a lot of beauty in that here. Um, in Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, it says, uh, rejoice in everything. Pray continually and give thanks. And that's the one of the things that you just, the verses that I've clung to this whole year is to rejoice. You're probably going to hear me laugh around this building and, and it's kind of loud and it may be annoying to some people, but I like to laugh. You have to rejoice. You have to continually live and, and you have to continually pray. Prayer to me isn't just on your knees with your hands folded. It's a daily walk. It's throughout the day and all all day. Um, and you have to remember the, the blessings that God gives you too. We have to give thanks in all things. Uh, in the sad times of losing family members and in the happy times of my mother accepting Christ and, and my son too. He accepted Christ um, just last week. So there's good things all around us. 2020 hasn't been all bad. There's been a lot of personal growth for me physically and spiritually. And people are ready to wipe off 2020. It was a, 
it was a pivotal year for me in my life and I, I don't, I would not wish 2020 to be gone. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Tim. Um, I'm Shelly Nagel. We have three kids, uh, Kayla, Tim, and Colin. And we've been coming to Center Point for... Seven years. Seven years. Starting 2020, um, so New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we were in the hospital, in the emergency room. Herniated four disc, and, but that was nothing compared to what was to come. And uh, so in April, um, my work called. I uh, worked at a body shop for about 20 years and said, hey, we need you back. And I wasn't cleared by the doctor yet. And she's so like, well, we need to find somebody to replace you. And, you know, we need, they were busy at the time. So um, that happened. And then COVID hit. And um, so that was tough. They you laid know, you off. Yeah, I was laid off. And, you know, been there 20 years, so I worked with family. You know, it felt we were really close, and that was kind of hard. And then, um, had a, after that, um, had an opportunity to start a body shop, perfect opportunity. Um, it was just perfect. It would I would have thought it was perfect. May. May. Six. Uh, yeah. Um. Kayla, um, she was in a car accident. We got a knock on the door at about 5.45 in the morning, um, and it was a Butler County Sheriff officer um, who had told us that she was in a severe car accident, and um, she was airlifted to University of Cincinnati Hospital um, with a traumatic brain injury. And um, when she was in the hospital, like, we didn't know if she was going to make it. We, we didn't know anything. The doctors couldn't tell us anything. And all we had was him. But we had the hope and faith and the loves that he, that he gives us. And we just held on to that. Um, and the doctors said, you'll no, never have, have your daughter back. And that was hard, you know. But Shell and I realized, wait a minute. The doctors are smart, they're great, but they're not him. They're not God. He has the final say, and he can move mountains. He can do anything. Anything's possible through Christ. And he's the one that gave us the strength to get through it. She, Kayla, was in a coma for almost two months, and um, the doctors kept telling us they weren't sure if she would ever wake up um, or if she would remain in a vegetative state the rest of her life. Um, Kayla remained in the hospital for about 106 days. Um, she made amazing progress. Um, I think like doctors and nurses were just in awe of the progress that she made. Um, and she came home on August 20th and um, 
just the progress that she continues to make um, is amazing. She still needs 24-hour um, care. Um, she can't do many things on her own. She's still confined to a wheelchair, um, but we believe that um, she will eventually walk. Um, she's gotten so much better since she's been home. One other thing um, with my daughter being hit by a drunk driver, um, we forgive you. Uh, we love you. And um, that's important. We need to forgive and, and forget. Because if we hold on to it, it doesn't allow us to grow. And it's hard sometimes, but it's important. And with this new year coming, let's, let's transform ourselves. Let's be new. Let's get rid of our old self. We can do it. We can do it together. We have his word. We have him. He has never left us. And with going through hard times, he's here. He, he will guide us, strengthen us. We have the love and hope. And when you're going through something, don't give up the faith. If anything, draw closer to him. He will help guide you through it. And he carried us last year, this year. He will next year. We'll just keep drawing closer. I know we get distracted by so many things. We're always running, we're busy. We can't focus on what is truly important, the one that created us, but he's always here and he's always loved us. One of my favorite chapters uh, in the entire Bible is Isaiah chapter 40. So the book of Isaiah is referred to as the little Bible. Uh, it contains 66 chapters and the first 39 chapters focus on judgment under the nation of Assyria and the last 27 chapters focus on redemption uh, even though Israel's in Babylonian captivity. And so when Isaiah writes this prophetic book, Israel is about 100 years away from uh, the Babylonian captivity. But Isaiah's aim is to bring comfort to them in the midst of uncertainty. And so Israel felt abandoned by God. They had suffered immense pain and loss. They were grieving what was and what could have been. They weren't sure that God could deliver them. Frankly, they weren't sure that he even could. Uh, they had a lot of doubts and a lot of questions, and maybe you've wondered that yourself. Maybe you've had your own doubts and questions this year. 2020 didn't turn out the way any of us would have expected, and certainly not the way we wanted. Uh, we all lost something, uh, even if it was nothing more than normalcy. And so Isaiah 40 turns the corner into what's considered the New Testament of Isaiah's book, and it opens with these words that I think we all could stand to hear. It says, Comfort, comfort my people says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. In the midst of the chaos and the confusion, in the midst of the weariness and the wondering, in the midst of the tiredness and the tears, God says, comfort. I've not forgotten you. I've not abandoned you. You are still my people and I'm still your God. And that's true of us too. God always steps into our difficulty with comfort because we are his people. And then Isaiah goes on to describe how God is still on his throne in verse 12. It says, who else held the oceans in his hand? Who's measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Who's able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? No. For all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. God is sovereign over all of his creation, over every conflict, over every crisis. Nothing shakes him. Nothing surprises him. Uh, the earth, which our most brilliant scientists can't even fathom, 
Isaiah says it's a drop in the bucket. Like God takes the vast mountain range of the Rockies with its 44 14ers that are in Colorado, and he just like you know sets them on a scale. Like, have you ever climbed a 14er? Uh, I haven't. Uh, I've driven one, and that was difficult enough. So climbing one is quite a feat. God just like picks it up and puts it on a scale. So that that's who our God is. And this list is is a list of rhetorical questions. Like, what do we have, or what do we know? that we can possibly teach God to make him any better at his job of being God? And the answer is absolutely nothing. So here's, here's, my, here's my advice to you, my word of counsel to you. Don't look at God through your circumstances. Look at your circumstances through God. We, we look at God through our lens of frustration and we look at him through our lens of fear or through our lens of worry or through our lens of grief. And when we do that, our circumstances seem really big and our God seems really small. It throws everything out of perspective and our circumstances then seem insurmountable. And the result is that we, we collapse in complete exhaustion and weariness because we believe there's no way to overcome. But, but we need to flip the lens like what God is trying to do through Isaiah is to get Israel and to get us to see our circumstances through him. Like what if we start looking at our frustration through the lens of God? What if we looked at our fear through the lens of God? What if we looked at our worry through the lens of God and our grief through the lens of God? Here's what we would find. He, he's bigger than our biggest frustrations. He's greater than our greatest Fear, he's more enormous than our most enormous loss. God's peace will outlast any pain you feel. And then in verse 25, he flips the lens. He says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Asks the Holy One. Look up to the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. And the God who calls the stars by name knows yours. The God who checks to see that none of them are missing never misses a single tear that falls from your cheek. He hung the stars in their place and he called them good. But when he formed you in your mother's womb, he called you very good. You are his most prized possession. And if he counts the stars to make sure that none are missing, you can be sure that he watches your every step, that he listens to every heartbeat, and that he takes care to know every thought you have. And he goes on to say, Verse 27, O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Listen, you don't understand your circumstance, but God does. You don't understand your situation, but God does. And because he understands, here's the good news, because he understands, we don't have to. Do you know how much time I've wasted trying to understand the things that my feeble, finite mind will never be able to comprehend? God never asked us one time to understand. He simply asks us to trust him. And this entire chapter is about how he's earned the right to be trusted. And you're exhausted by your circumstances. You're, you're worn out from trying to fix it. You're weary from trying to explain it. And renewal comes when we just kind of pull over and place our hope and our trust in the inexhaustible God of the universe. And here's what happens when we do that. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. 
You know, I think a lot of us are tired and worn out by the junk of 2020. But we have a God who gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And if 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we are weak and we are powerless, which makes us prime candidates for the power and the strength that the Lord himself provides. And here's all you have to do to receive it. Just put your trust in the Lord. If it sounds simple, it's because it is. So listen, stop trying to figure it all out. Most things in life are, are beyond our ability to understand. They're beyond our ability to comprehend. They're beyond our ability to make sense of. So as you step into 2021, make it your resolution to simply increase your trust. And that's what's getting Brent Carter through. That's what's getting Amber Caesar through. That's what's getting Tim and Shelly Nagel through. And that's what will get you through and what will get me through. Hindsight is 2020. There are things you wish you could have done differently this year. There are things you wish you could go back uh, and change. If only you knew then what you know, you know now. But here's the good news. 2020 is hindsight. 2020 is hindsight. 2021 is a new year. And those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. So happy new year, friends. I'll see you next year.